Hello and welcome to Allegro. Uh, first thing I'll do is play the tune for you. So, this is Allegro. This is a great song, and it has three different techniques that are involved in it. And if you can see this board behind me, I've written the song out here. I've written all the parts out. Tried my best to get rid of all the glare and whatnot here, but it's kind of tough when you're working with this, uh, you know, bare bones setup that I'm going with right now for this experiment of this YouTube channel. So, the first color you'll see is uh, purple. And then, underneath, you'll see notes written in red. And if you look very closely, you can see these green apostrophes. At the bottom here, you'll notice that there's a little legend for uh, kind of what each color represents. The first section is purple. And this word down here, staccato, staccato, is written in purple, which means that whole purple section is in the style of staccato, meaning the bow strokes are disconnected by a stop. There's a perfect stop, yant, yant, and end in a beginning to the note that's really audible. And uh, I didn't have enough room to write the whole order of the song, but really you'll notice that the order of the song, if you're looking in your book, it's number 13, is actually this purple section is performed twice followed by the red section once, and then a purple section at the end. Now, uh, I'm not going to go through every single note name, because at this point, especially with our D major scale warm-up, we should really be at the point where we've got these note names kind of together. So if you're still struggling with some of the note names, either pause the video and work your way through it pizzicato, or go back to the D major scale video and really kind of tighten up on some of uh, those note names and getting from one to the next in the different bow patterns. So the real important thing is to take this first section and I usually just take the first four notes, two high D's and two A's. And I practice my staccatos like that. Remember, a good staccato will have a stop. Just like that, right? So if you put all four together with stops, you get the bow stops the in between every single note. So try it with me. One, two, four notes, go. Nice. The other thing to notice is that a nice staccato doesn't require, it's not jerky, it's not a, uh, it doesn't look, I guess for lack of a better word, it doesn't look weird. It's a nice smooth acceleration and a smooth stop. Sometimes students do like a like this real jerky motion and that kind of creates this abrasive tone so everything stays relaxed but it's just about getting a nice crisp stop so try to stay relaxed and play as normal as possible but just stop that bow here come the first four notes again one two ready go now let me demonstrate the difference in what I would not like to see in this section. So this would be an incorrect performance of the first four notes. Hear the difference? There's any space between the notes at all. Actually, there's none because the bow keeps moving. So make sure you really get those four notes down. Try it with me again. But actually, listen first. Now try it with me. One, two, ready, go. Same thing and ready, go. Good, and then we're going to apply that technique to the whole section. It'll sound like this. Notice how 
notice that the bow stops. The only time it gets kind of more challenging to put stops between the notes is when you get to these eighth note sections, and the underline means that the notes go twice as fast. So you get yum yum dun 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 dun. Try it one more time with me. One, two, and ready, go. Nice. Now, in that first section, the next thing that's important is that there's a green apostrophe at the end of that line. It ends with a D, open D string, on a down bow. But the piece, when we repeat this section, starts with a high D on a down bow. So, we need to lift the bow or retake the bow, which is just a small little circle, really. We did this in Rainbow Express. It's just a quick little retake of the bow. We start at the middle of the bow and then come back to it. Try it with me. One, two, ready, go. And lift. Two, ready, go. Same thing, ready, go. And last time, ready, go. Nice. So when I put the staccatos together with the bow lift, I'll be able to play it twice in a row and watch me do all of that now. in a row it's um, separated by a lift now again there's a lift at the end of the line so before I get to this red section which is legato because we can see it's written in red and the red word is legato we have to lift again now legato bows are super flowing and connected we try to really make this uh, like a perfect connection between all the notes so we don't want space between the notes so this section is and at the end of that section we freeze at the tip of our bow okay so you can see the difference if I played that section staccato it sound like this But that is how we play the first section, not the second section. So listen again. So everything is nice and connected, and we finish that with a pause at the tip of the bow. So if you need to, pause and go practice with what I just played. Okay, you're back. Let's do the B section, the red section, together once. One, two, ready, go. Now at the end of the red section, there's a bow lift again, right? A green apostrophe. So we freeze at the tip of our bow, just like this. And then we wait for whoever's leading, in this case I'm leading in the video, we wait for them to retake their bow before we go any further. So it would look like this, then would sound like, uh, me. for me nice so that is just the first section again 
So if you need to practice either of those sections, including the bow lifts, please go back to them now. If not, we're going to play through it once together. Okay. Instrument up in a good playing position. Make sure you have a straight wrist. Don't squash that tomato. Make sure you have a nice bow. Here we go. Two, three. Nice. And that is Allegro. So keep practicing and I'll see you in class.